So today we are going to talk about chapter number seven, the accounting cycle. In order uh, to talk about accounting cycle, we will start from account. So we're going to discuss what is an account. So as you know already, because you have studied in accounting 2301 and accounting 2302, an account is a detailed record of all increases and decreases that have occurred in an account during a specific period and the record of all changes in a particular asset, liability, stocks, holders equity during a period it is a basic summary device that's used in accounting. So let me give you an example. So here is an account. Let's talk about cash. You know, this is what we call a T account. The debit is on this side and credit is on this side. So this is what we call it the increase. And this is what we call a decrease. Now, cash, as you know, is an asset. All assets increases when we debit. So the, for example, if you are receiving the cash, you're always going to debit the cash. If you are giving up the cash, you will always credit the cash. So the debit cash coming in on this side and cash going out on this side. So when it says that it gives you uh, what have occurred in a given specific period. So there was a definition of period in accounting 2301. A period was defined as a month, a uh, quarter, semi-annual, six months, or a yearly basis. So there are three things that are very important when it comes to period. One is the month, the second is the quarter, and the third is a year. Because we provide a financial statement on a monthly basis, on a quarterly basis and on a yearly basis. So almost all businesses prepare a financial statement on an annual basis. A lot of publicly traded companies and also privately held corporations prepare their quarterly returns. Uh, public companies have to submit to the government, uh, uh, SEC, and the private companies prepare to give their shareholders, uh, their banks, leasing company, insurance companies, things like that. So basically it tells us the account keeps track of what is coming in and going out. So there are three basic accounts that we talked about, assets, liability, and equity. And then there are two accounts that for it, so these three are for balance sheet accounts, which we call a permanent account, we're gonna talk about a little bit later. And then there are two accounts, revenues and expenses uh, that are for income statement, all right? The next thing we're going to talk about chart of account. A chart of account is used to organize company's account. So basically a chart of account is like a chart of account that has listed assets, liabilities, equity, revenue, and expense accounts. They have a numbering. Sometimes they start from zero. Sometimes they start from over a thousand. So for example, all numbers start with thousands. The asset account, 2000 for liability, 3000 starts with equity, 4000 starts with uh, revenue account, and 5000 starts with an expense account. Okay. What is a transaction? An event that has a financial impact on the business and can be measured reliably. So for example, if you are a business and you are purchasing inventory, that's one transaction. You are debiting the inventory that is coming into your business and you either crediting the cash which is going out of the business or a promise that what we call accounts payable or a notes payable that you are writing on behalf of your business that you will pay at a later time. Uh, a, a business transaction, you're going to fill up a gas tank and you either run your credit card or you pay them 20 bucks to fill up your tank. That is a business transaction. So that's uh, for, for you, you giving up the cash and getting the gas for a gas station is the revenue that they are receiving for selling gas and they're receiving the cash uh, because of it. Okay. Again, it gives something and it receives something. Accounting record, both sides of the transaction. The both sides of the transaction is the same, the debit and the credit side. So for example, if the gas station is selling you a gas for $20, so they're going to debit cash for $20 and they're going to credit revenue or sales revenue for, for $20. So that sales revenue is coming through gas. So they may say sales revenue of gasoline uh, in just in order to be more 
we have already talked about double entry accounting where we, this is an example of double entry accounting when we are having using debits and credits economic event must be recorded in the company's accounting economic event is just a fancy word for a transaction an event or a transaction they may affect any elements of accounting equation asset liabilities and stockholders equity so for example you can see your assets are going up and sales revenue is considered an equity account that is also up so that fulfills the basic accounting equations when now we're going to talk about uh, recording transaction accountants use source documents to provide evidence and data for recording transaction now what is a source document so let me give you with this example so you are going to macy's to purchase a new pair of jeans so when you go to the macy's and you purchase a new pair of jeans they give you a receipt that receipt is the proof of purchase for you so for example you go home and you try this 125 dollar jeans and you didn't like it what you're going to do you're going to go for exchange because normally businesses give you 30 days or two weeks to either return or ex exchange something uh, for that jeans. so you go next day or next week and you say hey i do not like this jeans uh, i would like to return it so they're going to ask you the proof of purchase and then you're going to provide the receipt so that receipt is a proof of purchase and they're going to return either if you pay cash they will give you cash if you have paid using your credit card they will return refund it on the credit card now it may not be as important for you as a customer but it is extremely important for businesses to keep track of these kind of things so for example when a business claims that they have an inventory of one million dollar and when they are going to get audited the auditor would like to know if they have a proof of purchase means if they say i have a million dollars worth of computers so the auditor is going to ask you okay so who are your vendors where did you purchase this inventory of one million dollars worth of computers so they're going to give you a paperwork so the the paperwork will provide the proof of purchase and also the proof of existence in some ways that the company has purchased the inventory worth $1 million. So basically, the source documents are considered purchase invoices, bank checks, and sales invoices. So these, if you have, say, I have sold $2 million worth of computers, so you must have sales invoices. The copy that you receive when you purchase $125 jeans, they also keep a track of that, how many jeans or how many computers they have sold. So the, uh, uh, the auditor can go through these paperwork and can verify whether the business has truly sell $2 million worth of computers or not. Create a journal entry to represent the accounting transaction. So the creating a journal entry like this. So this is also called journal entry because this information in going into a journal. So it's called a journal entry or sometimes we just write JE, journal entry in accounting so that accounting it so it increases the twenty dollar cash in the cash account and it increases the sales revenue in the sales account debit and cre credit appropriate accounts so appropriate accounts in this cash in this case was cash and sales revenue post the journal entry into journal ledger with the following information so we put this information in the journal ledger we put the date what date we have sold the jeans account effect so we have two accounts one is the cash and the other is sales revenue dollar amount we already know is twenty dollars and an explanation as uh, you can put sale of a jeans or one jeans that we have sold okay now we're going to talk about what is the data entry double entry accounting records dual effects of each transaction records that dual means two effects of each transaction they are dual effects. So for example, in this case, in this case, in this journal entry or this transaction, we are changing the cash, increasing the cash by $20. And we also increasing the sales revenue by $20. Accounting uses double entry to record the dual effect of each transaction that we have just discussed. And 
and the T account we have already talked about, the debit on the left side and the credit on the right side. But that was the example that I have given you is was for the asset cash. So for example, if you have a liability, so let's talk about a liability. And the most famous liability is accounts payable. Accounts payable, you just put the name here, T account debit on this side and credit on this side. So when your liabilities are increasing, when you're going to credit them. So, and decrease when you are going to debit them. So decrease is on the credit side and the uh, sorry, increases on the credit side and decrease is on the debit side. Over here, the increase, as you can see, increases on the debit side for asset. So cash is an asset. So for asset, the increase will be on the debit side and a decrease on the credit side. For liability is totally opposite. Debit means it's decrease and credit means it's increase. The next thing we're going to talk about, uh, the permanent stockholders, uh, sorry, uh, the second, this is the second page, I'm jumping on the third page. Uh, so uh, what is a normal balance of an account, all right? So assets such as cash will always have a debit balance. Have a normal debit balance. So assets such as cash, land, building, inventory, account receivable will always have a normal debit balance, all right? A uh, and, and a liability will always have a credit balance. So liability will al always have a, a normal uh, credit balance because assets and liabilities are two opposite, opposing, up opposite of each other. So normal credit balance. All accounts are summarized on one side of T accounts called the normal balance and asset increases with a debit, as I said earlier, and normal balance is a debit balance. Liabilities and equity increases with a credit, so their normal balance is a credit balance. Okay. The next thing we're going to talk about is generalizing and posting transaction. After reviewing source document, we have already talked about accountants record the transactions. Transaction recorded in the journal, the record of the transaction uh, in date, order means for example, January 1st will be the first, the January 2nd, all these transactions goes in a date order. The data from the journal is then transferred to the ledger, a process called posting. So when we move these transactions from journal to a ledger, which is called, so when we are moving this transaction from journal, it's called posting, all right? Now, accrual accounting. We have already discussed accrual accounting in Accounting 2301 because uh, discussed two types of accounting, accrual accounting and a uh, cash accounting. So here we're going to review that information. So accrual accounting is required by GAAP. So, so all publicly traded companies are uh, uh, required to do accrual accounting. Uh, they are not allowed to do cash accounting. Cash accounting, in fact, uh, small businesses use, very mom and pop stores use as cash accounting. Majority of the large private and public companies use GAAP or accrual accounting. Uh, requires company to measure and report accounting transaction without the necessity that cash has been received or paid. So in cash accounting, when you receive a cash, it's an income or a revenue. In cash accounting, when you paid the cash is an expense, but in accrual accounting, it does not matter whether you receive the cash or not, it will be considered a revenue or expense. For example, so you are running a business and you purchase inventory of $5 million, but you told the, uh, the vendor that you're going to make a payment in five weeks. So for the first five weeks, you owe $5 million to the vendor. So you're going to make a transaction debit inventory for $5 million, but you are saying that inventory came into your business. So your inventory is up by $5 million and you credit accounts payable for $5 million. You are crediting the accounts payable indicating to the reader of the financial statement that your company, your business owes $5 million because you purchase $5 million worth of inventory 
on credit. That's all it is. Okay. Uh, accrual accounting records transactions such as collecting cash from the customer. So if you are selling your customer, so, so your customer came and they say, hey, I want to buy five computers from you and those computer turns out to be $10,000. The customer say, I don't have the money, but I will pay you like in six weeks. So what you're going to debit, you're going to debit account receivable because this is the money that customer owes you. So when you owe to your vendor, it's accounts payable. When a customer owes you, it's account receivable. And then you're going to credit uh, sales revenue for selling five computers for $10,000. When you receive interest earned, so you're going to debit cash and you credit interest revenue. When you're paying salaries, rent, and other expenses, you're going to say debit salary expense, debit rent expense, or debit credit, uh, any other expense, and you're going to credit cash. Borrowing money, you're going to say debit cash, means money is coming in, and you're going to credit notes payable or bonds for the same account. Paying off loans, you're going to debit loan payable or accounts payable or notes payable and you're going to credit cash. When you're issuing a stock, you're going to say debit cash and you're going to credit common stock. The two principle that we're going to use here is revenue recognition principle and expense recognition principle. Revenue recognition principle, is, it says it doesn't matter when the customer pays. Once you provided the service or the product to the customer, you can recognize the revenue. Expense recognition is doesn't matter when you pay the cash, once you use something, it becomes an expense. The next thing is a time period concept. The time period concept reported at uh, accounting information at regular interval. There are three intervals that we talked about on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, and a yearly basis. Basic accounting period is one year, like a yearly basis. Around 60% of large companies use calendar year from January 1 to through January 31st. So there is a fiscal year and a calendar year. A fiscal year may end on any other date, December 31st. A famous example, Walmart. Walmart year ends on January 31st. So they go from February 1 to January 31st. So instead of using a calendar year from January 1, to December 31st, they go from February 1st to December 31st. So sometimes they ask you a question, what is the difference between a fiscal year and a calendar year? It could be an interview question and you should be able to answer that. Companies also prepare a, a state financial statement for interim periods. Interim periods are like monthly, quarterly, and maybe semi-annual, okay? Revenue recognition principle tells us revenues recognized when earned. Earned means you didn't get the cash, whether you get the cash or not, you were able to provide the product or service to the customer. Expense incurred to generate revenue are recognized in the same time period. What does it mean? It means, suppose I am working for you as an accountant. You have to pay me $5,000 a month. So you will pay me $5,000 at the end of the end of the month. So you're going to recognize since Kashif has worked. So what are you going to say? Debit salary expense and credit salary payable. That means you owe me at the end of the month. And then when you're going to pay me, you're going to say debit salary payable and credit cash. All right. Pay permanent and temporary accounts. So uh, we talked about permanent accounts are the balance sheet accounts, such as asset, liability, and equity. Temporary accounts are the income statement accounts, which are revenue and expense. All right. And there are two other accounts plus gains and losses. These are temporary accounts. All right. So permanent accounts are accounted whose balance carry over from one accounting period to the next which we do in the balance sheet account. Temporary account are used to gather information of accounting period, then reset to zero. They become zero. It's a part, uh, uh, we always, it starts with a fresh income statement every year, but in the balance sheet, the ending balance becomes the beginning balance for the next year. Okay. So that's uh, permanent and temporary accounts. Uh, the permanent uh, accounting uh, equity uh, accounts are common stock and retained earnings that we have talked about. Common stock represent the 
uh, what we call the ownership of your investors in your company and retained earnings are the earnings that you are keeping in the company uh, and you decide to utilize at a later point, all right? Uh, closing a using income summary. Temporary accounts are zero out at the close of the accounting period, whether it's month or uh, quarter or a year, whichever you are, and you start fresh in the next period. The balances these accounts are ultimately transferred to retain earnings. So what happened is the income statement account, so if you remember the uh, retained earnings, uh, retained earnings uh, or RE is retained earnings, well, the pen is dying at the same time here. Retain earnings. It always has a beginning balance. Then you add the net income. You subtract the dividend. And that gives you the ending. Sorry, the dividend will go on this side, which is a negative. And then it gives you the ending balance of your the ending balance of your retained earnings. So that is the closing part. So from income statement, income statement is closing into a retained earning and then this retained earning would be reported in the balance sheet. All right, the income statement reported in the balance sheet. The summary account, such as income summary, is a temporary account can be used to help in closing process. Any temporary account with a debit balance is credited with the offsetting debit to the income summary. Any temporary account with a credit balance debited with the offsetting credits into an income summary. Income summary is thus closed into the retained earnings and dividends are also closed into the uh, retained earnings the, the way I have showed you here. So I'm gonna stop here and then we're gonna continue this into a second lecture. Uh, please wait for the next part where we're going to talk about financial statements.